Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host as always, Captain Ron, and love is in the air. It's Valentine's Day time, so we want to show you something cool. Now everybody out there is showing you how to make a heart-shaped ribeye steak, how to make a beautiful filet mignon. Hey, all beautiful things to cook for your love for Valentine's Day, but what do you go with it? We got the ultimate side dish for you. It is the cheesiest and easiest lobster mac and cheese that you'll ever see. Oh, and did I mention that there might be a giveaway this week too? I don't know, it's Valentine's Day. Stay tuned and check it out for yourself. This is the easiest lobster mac and cheese that there is. So we only have a couple of ingredients. Let me go through them with you. We've got four kinds of cheese. I got a little bit of Colby Jack, some Swiss cheese, some sharp cheddar, because I love the sharpness. We got some Parmesan cheese and panko breadcrumbs, macaroni of your choice. We got these beautiful lobster tails. We're using the spiny lobsters today and they're from Florida. It's gonna get a little bit of heavy cream and that's it, folks. That's all the ingredients. It's gonna be so simple. This is gonna be a romantic Valentine's dinner to top them all. All right, while I got you here, let's talk macaroni because everybody always wants to make the same old macaroni and cheese and use elbows. Boring, I'm gonna take a nap, all right? Mix it up a little bit, feel free. I got some spirals here. We got these little, uh, they're sort of half, half elbows. I got ziti noodles, mastacoli. Use what you want, okay? What I like is to get something that's really gonna hold the sauce. So what we're gonna use today is we're gonna use these spirals. Everybody calls them something different. We're gonna use these spirals because what happens is that when we make it, they really hold on to that sauce. We want that nice cheesy sauce really sticking to that pasta really well. So that's what we're gonna use today. But first, lobster prep. Now the prep on these tails is really simple. All right, we're gonna take it. We're gonna take our kid beautiful kitchen shears. Make sure you have some nice sharp ones. Put it right in the top. And we're just gonna cut right down the middle of the shell. Okay, like that, all the way down to the very end, all right? And here's a little cool little trick for you. Cut a little slit there and a little slit there. While you're doing that, Ron, aha, I'm gonna show you in a minute, okay? So we got it all cut like that. I'm gonna kind of pull it open, stick our thumb inside, and round out the meat here and pull that meat right up out of the shell, just like that. Now, remember that little slit that we made? Guess what? Now the meat comes out and it's gonna go through there so we can lay it right on top of the shell, just like that. We have our beautiful lobster tail for a gorgeous presentation. Okay, and it's ready to cook, just like that. All right, our first step is gonna be to light the grill. Now you notice I already have a bunch of charcoal in there from last time I cooked. Guess what, folks? That is still good, okay? You can use that charcoal over and over again. So I got a couple starters, putting it in the blaze ball, drop it right down in there. Now, again, you know, we did have a bunch of used charcoal in there from, from our last cook. You can still reuse that. What we found, because I did a video about it, is that if you add a little bit of fresh charcoal to it, it's gonna burn a lot better. Alrighty, now that the charcoal is lit, the beautiful part about this whole cook, it's a two-part process. First, we have to cook the lobster tails, then we have to cook the mac and cheese. But the beautiful part is that it's all gonna be at the same temperature. So 350 degrees is where we wanna get the grill to. And we're gonna go indirect for this. Okay, we're gonna cook the lobsters indirect, then we're gonna take them off, make the macaroni and cheese, put it in a pan, and put that back on here indirect as well. So, it's all one big setup for this whole entire cook. I told you it was easy. Now let's talk a little bit about mac and cheese and the ingredients. So the one main thing is obviously cheese. So a lot of people go out and they buy the pre-shredded stuff. Don't do that. Buy yourself a block of cheese. The, the bags of shredded stuff have all kinds of waxes on the cheese and everything. It doesn't melt quite right. If you do this and take a minute to grate your own cheese, it's gonna be a massive difference. And the beautiful part is it calls for half a pound of each. Each block is a half pound. So all our hard work is done. All you have to do is open it up and shred it. It helps if you get yourself a real good cheese grater too. I have an attachment for my KitchenAid that works pretty well, but this thing, I've had this for years and this sucker works like a champion. Oh boy. Now I wanna discuss a couple things here. This is how I make mine, okay? I'm gonna do the lobsters indirect and roast them like that. Some people prefer them grilled, get a little more color. What I find is they kind of toughen up a little bit when I grill them direct, so I'm gonna cook everything indirect. The other thing too is cheeses. These are the cheeses that I like. If you like something different, switch it up a little bit, okay? My original recipe didn't call for Swiss cheese. I added Swiss cheese in there. It really works out quite well. So 
Um, it's really simple. We're gonna boil our pasta and get that ready while the lobster tails are cooking. This way, we'll put everything together. It's all gonna go in one bowl. We're gonna put it right in here. We're gonna finish it off, take about half hour, 45 minutes. It's a beautiful thing. So, like I said, love is in the air. All right, all right, all right. It's that time of the video you've been waiting for. That's right, we're doing a giveaway this week. We got a really cool combo. We got a combo blazer ball and fogo starters. You've seen us use them in all of our videos. The blazer ball is awesome because you put two fogo starters in it, you clamp it closed and you throw it in there. You can pour charcoal on top of it. It helps lighting this thing so much easier. So we want to give away a set of both of these to one lucky winner. All you need to do is comment below, what is your favorite cheese to make macaroni and cheese with? Simple, that's all I know. I want to know because I know what cheeses I like, I want to know what cheeses you like, and there's a prize. So go ahead, leave the comment, and keep your fingers crossed. And now for the disclaimer, all winners will be announced next week in our video. Our grill is at that magic number of 350 degrees, so we're going to put our lobster tails on. I'm just going to set them on there just like this. All I did is lay the meat right on top of the shell. I'm just going to set them on here just like that. Okay, one. Two, you want to leave some space in between them, okay? Don't crowd them. Give them room to cook, just like that. Again, 350 degrees. It's going to take probably about, about a half hour or something like that. Now, normal cooking temperature is to get them to 145 degrees finishing temperature. No, we're going to cook them again in the mac and cheese, so we're only going to bring these to 135. So be careful of that, 135 for this recipe. While we've got the lobster tails cooking, we're gonna go ahead and prepare our macaroni for our macaroni and cheese. So I have one of these little but portable butane burners, man. These things are fantastic. Take a can of fuel like this. I love to use it outdoors. It's a great accent for your grilling. And uh, you know what else? It doesn't stink up the house when you're frying foods. So we're gonna take our Romertoff pot here, which I already have full of water. Here's a big thing. Okay, when you're cooking pasta, make sure it's nice and salty water. You want that water to taste like the ocean. It's gonna build the flavor in the pasta. So we're gonna pour a bunch of kosher salt right into our water and then get it boiling. And our lobsters are done. They have hit 135, they actually went to 137. Just don't tell anybody, okay? But look at them, they're beautiful. Oh man, if you could smell that, man, it's pretty tempting just to eat these things the way they are, I gotta tell you. But no, lobster mac and cheese. The water is boiling away. I love these pots, man. They hold heat so well, the water's boiling away. We're gonna take our curly Q pasta, just pour this in here into our nice salty, salty water. All right, now package directions say nine minutes to cook this pasta for. We're gonna cook it for eight. Hey Siri, set a timer for eight minutes. Eight minutes, cause it's still gonna cook a little bit more when it's in the mac and cheese cooking. All right, our pasta is done, done, done. It's called al dente, which actually means to the tooth, believe it or not. So we're gonna pour it right into this strainer. Get all the water out of it. Do not rinse it, okay? We want all that starch to stay all over that pasta. Do not rinse it. And now that our pasta is all drained of all liquids, we pour it into our bowl. We're gonna put everything together in one bowl. Just under a cup of cheddar, just under a cup of Colby Jack, and just under a cup of Swiss. And we go about a half a cup of Parmesan, the shredded parm, not the grated, okay? Shredded, you want that right in there. And last but not least, an entire quart of heavy cream. Yeah, the good stuff, nice and thick. We're basically making macaroni and cheese Alfredo. And once we get that, we're gonna give this a good stir, combine it all up. Now, let's prep our lobster. All right, all we're gonna do for our lobster, really, is we're gonna take each tail, we're just gonna separate it from the shell itself, okay? Make sure there's no shells there. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of cut it in half, long ways like that, and cut into bite-sized chunks, okay? Because we're gonna combine it up into the mac and cheese itself. So, you don't want giant pieces as you're eating your mac and cheese. You wanna have beautiful, bite-sized chunks just like that. And we're gonna do the same for each tail. And there we have it, folks, all of our beautiful lobster meat. If you want to even cut it a little smaller, you can give it a little more chop if you want to. It's up to you, all right? It's all gonna be combined. So what we're gonna do now is take that big old pot of all of our stuff that we combined, the macaroni, the cheese, the cream, and we're gonna just dump our lobster meat right in. Okay, make sure you get all of it in there. Put it all in there. 
If you want to use the fourth tail, sure, go ahead, have at it, all right? Then we're gonna mix this around a little bit. Oh man. For my next trick, into the pot. What I have here is this beautiful pan. It's made by Romertoff here. We sell this on our website. It's awesome. It's made for the grill. So we're just gonna pour all of this into here. What I did is I didn't show you is I lightly buttered it, okay? I took a stick of butter and coated the whole entire inside with butter. And just give it a little flattening out here. Push it all down into the pot. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be good. Woo wee. All right, now, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the balance of all the rest of the cheese that we had left over. And we're gonna combine it all up into one bowl. So we got the jack, we got the cheddar, combine it all up, mix it all up so it's well, well, well blended. And then, here comes my favorite part. We're just gonna layer it right across the top. Just load up that whole top. I know it looks like a lot of cheese, but don't you worry about that, okay? Your guests will not complain about your mac and cheese being too cheesy. Trust me when I tell you. Sometimes I like to make a little bit of a panko uh, mixture. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about a half a cup of these, okay, just like that, and about a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna use, this is a half a cup, so I'm gonna use about half, all right? Just like that and mix it up. Now, what I also like to do is I like to take my Parmesan cheese and spread some more across this top layer of the cheese here. Parmesan gives a ton of flavor. It's got that nice sharpness that you really want on your mac and cheese. So give it a good layer. All right, and don't forget there's already some in the panko, so we're not gonna go too crazy, but there, that looks pretty nice. So we've mixed up our breadcrumbs and our panko and our Parmesan, I mean. Now we're just gonna give it a light coating across the top. Okay, nice and evenly. This is gonna just build some beautiful flavor on it. Oh, the love of your life is gonna be so pleased when you serve this. You know, I said it's a side dish, but trust me when I tell you, this can be a meal in itself right here. Next step, we still got our egg burn at 350 degrees, so let's go ahead and put it on the grill. And the beautiful part is that these pans are made for the grill, so they can handle high temperatures. Look at that. Boom, boom, easy peasy, I told you. All right, guys, we're at about 35 minutes in, and it is looking good. Yeah, I cheated, I peaked already, but come on in, I wanna show you this. Oh, the big review, wow. Wow. Valentine's is gonna be good around here. See all the bubbling edges and the browning? That's exactly what we're looking for. This is perfect. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, that smells so good. Now, we took it off the grill. What you wanna do is let this sit up for at least 10 minutes, okay? At least 10 minutes. It's gonna thicken up. It's gonna kinda just meld into itself a little bit. It's all gonna come together really well. So 10 minutes rest time. I know it's tempting. Um, I want to dive into it too. But if we wait 10 minutes, it's going to be even better. A few moments later. All right, guys. This is my favorite time of the video, okay? I wish that I could share this with you. Here, do you want some? Do you want some? Let me know down below if you really want some. But I get to do the honors. Oh, my God. Golly. Mm. Mm. Oh, I know that I talked about this as a side dish, but I'm telling you. That could be a meal in itself. It's so creamy. It's so cheesy. The lobster in it is so good. It's so sweet. I'll tell you what, that right there, if that's not the perfect Valentine's Day, either meal or side dish, I don't know what it is. If you think of something better, let me know down below because I want to know. Guys, if you saw anything like the pots that we use in the video here, there's always a link down below in the description. The best part, there is a full recipe. Always down below, there's a full recipe, blog post, I write it myself so you get to enjoy it even more, all right? Anyway, listen, I hope that you guys have a super happy Valentine's Day. Remember to tell the ones that you love that you love them, all right? That's important. It's really important. So that's all I've got for today. Happy Valentine's Day. Lobster mac and cheese that can't be beat. It's so good. I'm going to dig right back into this right now. So don't forget about the giveaway, all right? Leave us our comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you like what you saw here, okay? Leave us a thumbs up below and leave us a comment down below. It really helps our videos. So if you want to see more, help us out, okay? Anyway, that's all I've got. Remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron, out.